Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for your love, your mercy, your grace. Thank you for each and every blessing that we receive each and every day, Lord. And, um, we lift up all those on the prayer request this morning, Lord, those for health, the unspokens, just to praise us, Lord, that uh, you being with us and guiding us and just working in our lives, Lord. And just be in here with us this morning and guide us and, and have me to say the words you'd have me to say, Father, that they come from you so that we may grow a little wiser and a little stronger in your word and wisdom. These things in our Lord Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hmm. We as, as Christians are the Lord's army. Um, and as, this, as any other army in the world, you must be trained. Um, each and every Christian has a kind of a, a role that God wants you to play. And uh, I truly feel that your life experiences is what's going to train you to, have, to be what God wants you to be. Um, and the more I do this study and the more I kind of look back into my own life and then into the past, um, the more of this I'm starting to realize. Um, your, your life experiences is what shapes you to who you are. Um, Wesley likes to call them filters. Um, God has been part of your life in the beginning. Um, you know, he tells us that he knew us before the foundations of the world. Um, there's at a, a moment, and I think this, I believe this, that all this is training, and at the moment that uh, you have salvation, you begin to serve. Don't mean your training's over. Um, if, you know, I mean, just looking at our army, soldiers are constantly being trained in new things and retrained, and you're constantly learning. And so are we as Christian soldiers. Um, so in the army, we're sent to fight, um, to gain new territory and to regain lost territory. Um, of course, we're going to talk about this here in just a little bit. Satan has limitations and boundaries. There's places in this world where there's evil or demonic forces in strength. And what I mean by that, they're, they're, these evil things are there in high numbers. Um, just again, you know, look at all this stuff that's going on in the Middle East. Um, Christians are so quickly attacked and, and killed just because what Satan's trying to do is just stifle the spread of the gospel. Um, those who don't have the Holy Spirit or aren't, that aren't saved don't comprehend or see this war. They are part of it, whether they realize it or not. They're part of this world. Um, these lost people are often a tool of Satan. Um, Satan has, has his army, just as God has his. Um, these are the, the fallen angels. Uh, Satan himself is a fallen angel. Uh, you know, he, he, he is a fallen cherub. Uh, Ezekiel twenty eight sixteen, And that one's not on here. That's all right. I got the Bible right here. I wonder how we missed that one. No, I didn't. I skipped it. I'm sorry. Y'all, if y'all don't have the little, if you got the smartphone, these little Bible apps are just so great. I mean, you, you know, I have that big uh, stu study Bible. This, this thing here is just, it's just great. Ezekiel. Yeah, when you ain't got no signal. Here we go. Just a little more? Is that better? Okay. Up here it sounds loud. <clears throat> better? Okay. CQ <laughs> 20. Okay, here we go. 
By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of stones of fire. Okay, that's why I was using that to, to uh, relate Satan to being a fallen angel. Man, I got the clutch today. All right. And like I said, in the, in the Bible told us in right there that he was cast out. Uh, a third of his angels went with him. Um, you know, they favored Satan's rule. Uh, Matthew 25, 41. Then they shall, he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into the everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. In Revelations 12, 9, And the great dragon was cast out, the old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. The important part of that is they were cast here. And that's telling us that they're here dwelling amongst us. Um, you know, uh, these angels were split into two groups, basically. Those that uh, roam, and, and they're, they're roaming within the boundaries that God has sent. And then there are those that are chained. Um, those that are free ones are the ones that are uh, more, I mean, they're, they're the ones that are attacking us. The other ones are bound into the abyss. They're chained. Um, they will be let loose, though, at a set point in time. Um, but these ones that are loose, the ones that, you know, or have the ability to attack us, they have freedom here on earth, but they're under Satan's authority and, of course, God's authority. Those that are chained in darkness were done so because most believe that these are the ones that committed great sins. Um, they, the ones that intermingled with humanity. Um, you know, of course, this is the flood and, and the, the purifying of the bloodline and stuff like this. Um, where the Nephilim come from. Um, you know, and, and again, too, a lot of people believe that the, the dead Nephilim, their spirits are here also, you know, as, as demonic forces. Um, Jude 1 6, and the angels which kept not for their first estate, but left their own in inhibition. He hath reserved the everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Um, 2 Peter 2, 4, For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down into hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Um, good example of a, of a fallen angel or a demonic being is legion. Luke eight twenty-eight through thirty-three. And he saw Jesus. He cried out and fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, What I have to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God, most high, I beseech thee, torment me not. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man, for oftentimes it had called him, and he was kept bound with chains and in fetters. And he brake the bands and was driven of the devil into the wilderness. And Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him. And they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep because... Be, oh, I'm sorry. And they besought him and that he would not command them to go out into the deep. And there was there a herd of many swine feeding on the mountain. And they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them. And, suffered, and he suffered them. Then went the devils out of the man and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down to the steep place and to the lake and were choked. Um, there's some things to be picked up in here in, in these verses. Um, 
One is demons are subject to Jesus' command. Um, they're subject to our command. That is a power given to you as a Christian. Um, if you have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you, then you have some powers and dealt over you. Um, they understand the coming judgment. Um, these demonic forces of Satan, they know what awaits them. Um, and if you notice too, also, uh, Legion asked not to be sent to the abyss. Um, where, you know, this is where the chained angels is. He doesn't want to be bound. Um, you know, he, that is a, uh, I guess, be a suffering for, for a, a, a demonic being. I mean, to be chained pretty much for eternity. Um, you know, they're going to be set loose for a short time, but um, they, they have just fears and things as such as we do. Um, Satan has boundaries. They're limited to what, you know, he's limited to what he can do. Um, you see several places in the Bible where Satan has to have God's permission to, be, to go beyond these limitations. Um, Satan, you know, Job's a good example, but say, Satan can only do to you what God allows him to. Um, we all have a hedge of protection put up around us. Um, and as with Job, this, this had to be lowered a little bit for Satan to have his ways. Um, and like I said, let's, I think I got some Job on here. And I do. Job 1.10. And this is just talking about this hedge of protection. Hast not thou made a hedge about him, about his house, and about all he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in this land. See, Satan couldn't do anything to Job that God didn't allow. Um, and a lot of people ask, well, why is this done? Why is, why is you know, Satan allowed to attack us? Um, two reasons. One, it glorifies God. Um, because you're going to overcome it. And when you overcome a bad situation and you stop and you realize and you think and you thank God because you know that's what got you through that situation, um, one, it makes a great testimony. Um, and, and even if it's just between you and God, you know God got you through it. That's, to me, that's glorifying God. Um, Satan has a goal. He knows he's defeated. Um, he's been defeated from the beginning of the time. But uh, I don't think he realized it until J Jesus defeated death at the cross. I think at that point in time in his existence, he realized that uh, his number was up. That was, to me, that was his last hope. Um, as far as you know, having any kind of victory over the Lord. Um, but uh, he still fights us anyways. Um, he wants to keep as many souls from, from heaven as he can. And he does this, but like I said, I was talking about earlier about stifling the spread of the gospel. Um, us as Christians... We have our own form of chains or bonds. Um, I think I'm going to talk about this a little bit in my Sunday sermon this morning. Um, up until salvation and Jesus coming to your life, you were bound and chained by more ways than you realize. Um, Satan, his, his best weapon is what we carry right here, is our sinful nature. And he uses this against you more than you realize. Um, de depending on whatever your, your, your bond is, he knows it's there and he knows exactly how to use it. Um, you know, of course, common things are like drugs and things like that. But uh, I had a thought through this. Um, sometimes this the little chair in the sanctuary is a good bond for him. 
What good do you do if you only come to church on Sunday and sit right there and do nothing else with it? If you're not going out spreading the gospel, that, you know, you just come to Sunday, paying your respects, going through the motions, and going home and then living the rest of the week. I got thinking, well, that chair is a, it's a bond. You're here learning God's word stuff. You're, you know, and, I, and I'm not questioning anybody's salvation. That's between you and the Lord. But if you're not doing anything with it and you're just sitting in there, sitting in this green chair, you're bound to it. Does it kind of make any sense to what I'm, what I'm trying to say? You got to use what you were given. Um, with me, I think one of the things is, is my fear of offending somebody. Some, sometimes... Um, I'm seeing a tattoo artist. And, uh, you know, I'm, I have spent several hours with him. And so through this, you know, through the thing, we have conversations and stuff. And um, he's, he's, he's been in prison and stuff like this. And he's a great artist. Um, besides tattooing, he paints and does other things and sculpts and, and, and things like this. But he's full of hate. And, um, and then on top of this, he's a pagan. He's an Odinist. It's funny what you learn, the things that's out there in plain sight that you don't realize. And we were having a conversation, and he told me that he was going to pray to Odin. And I was like, wow, you know, it's not going to do you any good. <laughs> but something's there. For me, you see, the first things that came to my mind was, well, I really need to tell him about Christ. He doesn't understand Praying to Odin is not going to do him any good. But I didn't. And it's been on my mind quite a bit. Um, but that's, that's where Satan has me bound. Because I didn't want to offend him. I didn't want to make him mad. But it's coming. Um, I'm, getting the, I'm getting the strength and I prayed about it. And me and him's going to have us a talk. I even went and done a little bit of research that... Uh, because he's, he's into the whole Viking thing. You know, he's got these bearded acts and got the runes and the Viking riding and all this stuff. He's really into it. But, um, you know, when Vikings were in England, just about every one of them converted to Christianity. There's a reason for that, you know. There's, yeah, there's a time. Well, but... Right. I look in... You have to look into your heart. And the urge is there, but the courage wasn't. You, you know, you, you kind of understand what I'm saying? I knew that it was me hindering myself. Because um, my heart's telling... On one side, is telling me to speak to him and talk to him. And then the other part, uh, you know, I know it's me. I know it's my nature because I've been this way even before salvation. I, I hate to offend anybody, you know, because um, I want everybody to like me, and I, you know, and I want to be everybody's friend. But, um, and you also say to bring to mind uh, how you used to be. Yes. And people saw you. How you used yeah, to be. He, he has some, being in prison, he has some racism racist issues and um, I found myself falling in that too because I used to have that I still I do a lot of Christians are a problem because they don't want to offend and they feel like what you said well they're going to look back if they know you very well well boy she used to do all of these oh yeah you know and you say well do I want to go with this any further or but you know the 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 thing is is what to me what makes you a better person or helps you. You got to tell them what God's done for you. Yes. Um, you don't forget where you come from. I know where I come from. I know who I was. I know who I am. Um, you know, you go through a change. You transform. You turn into something different. I hadn't forgot who I was and where I come from, and I still carry a lot of those things with me. Um, you know, 
and this is coming to again in, in my Sunday morning, I grew up in a town where I was a minority. I, I grew up in a place where I was, it was only 5% white. Um, I understand bigotry and racism better than most people. Um, I think it's even worse so when the white people are a minority because a lot of these people, you know, they hadn't, they, they grew up where they're the majority. They hadn't had to deal with anything. But because other people and places have, it's instilled into them. Even though they haven't experienced it, but they, you know, well, you know, back in the Civil War times, you know, that, you know, white people oppressed us and they carry that with them, even though they haven't never experienced it. I have. You know, I know what it's like to have to go out of town to have a nice date. Because you can't stay in town. If you do, it's going to be trouble. But before we, you know, chasing the rabbit, um, we all have a chain somewhere. The wonderful thing is you have the power to break it. You're given the strength to do that. And I've learned generally when you break these bonds, they stay broke. You know, once, once you overcome a particular thing, then it's, it's done away with and it's gone. And that's something that no matter what is holding you back or what, it, what the Satan has you bound with, you have the ability to overcome it. Um, and, and then that's part of, part of growing as a Christian. Um, but like I said, that's, that's, that's his whole goal. And, and you know, he, Satan won that little fight a couple of weeks ago with, with, with this. But he hasn't won the battle. You know, and, and again, I'm getting into my little Sunday morning. The fight ain't over until you quit fighting. You know, um, I, don't, I don't like to lay down and take it. Um, if you're going to beat me, you, you've got to beat me completely. Um, 2 Corinthians 4, 3, and 6. But if the gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. In whom the good of the world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who command the light to shine out of the darkness has sinned in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Um, Go back to four. Now skip it. And who the God of this world, little G, God of this mm-hmm. world, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Jesus said, No one can come to me while they draw him. The little G, God of this world, is Satan. Mm-hmm. And many are blinded like the guys who worship Odin. Probably blinded the light of this world which is Jesus Christ until God says let there be light in that light that light doesn't see Jesus mm-hmm. um, no joy no peace no God K-N-O-W-God K-N-O-W-God but no God N-O God and we are blessed if we know him We are blessed if we have been given the opportunity to see and believe in Jesus, the light of this world. Satan's mission is to put out the light, to hide the light, to keep it in darkness. And here is an example Mm -hmm. where Satan has blinded the minds of men. I wait for God to give me an opportunity. I know that I'm supposed to witness it. And there's been times when I tried to force it, mm-hmm. and it can get ugly. Mm-hmm. 
But it's because that mind is blinded and God has not, it's not the time for light to be brought forth in that particular life. I have caught myself doing, doing that with, with, it's easier for me to speak to younger people. Yes. Um, you know, you know, to me being a little older, a little wiser, but, you know, generally with age comes some authority. You know, respecting your elders and so forth. And I, I have found myself, um, and, and this is bad, and this is something in the, in the past, and when I realized that I quit, finding myself talking the Bible and trying to encourage somebody to get into God's work. But I don't think I was doing it for the right reasons because I was wanting them to live the way I thought they should live. In my mind, what I thought was the right life for them. Um, and like I said, this was... Yeah, you know, because I didn't... And, and you, you do it just the way you correct your young. And, you know, I didn't like... I felt that the lifestyle that they were falling into and, 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 and experiencing was not the right thing, so I was using, you know, trying to correct them. Um, and apparently you have to. Yeah, and, and, and I find myself doing that with a lot of younger people, trying to um, mentor to them and um, explain things to them, you know. Um, um, you know, like I said, I like to talk about this a lot. A lot of young people, people aren't taught how to deal with alcohol, especially young people. I personally have nothing against wrong with alcohol, within moderation. Young people, most of them grow up thinking that you have to get dog face drunk, that you can't go and have a glass of wine or a margarita with, with your dinner on the beach. That's, you know, that personally, that's my thing. I, I love to... Some groupers, some hush puppies, margarita, sunset in the beach. But they think they have to get drink as much as they can as fast as they can because they have no education and don't know anybody. And that word, and see, and that's what leads into to bad things. You know, that leads into drunk driving or, or committing a sin or whatever because they, they have no education in that. Because they... I drink, I know I would but see to me, Right. We all we all have our, we all have our things, and I used this here a little a little while back. Um, going fishing, who would ever think fishing's a sin? But I, I use this this little analogy to, to try to help people understand it. You're going down the road. You got your boat. You got your truck. You know you're ready to go. Um, you you in a, you kind of in a hurry. You see somebody standing on the side of the road. You know, you see it all the time. Got a sign. Need some food, need some gas money or something. And you decide, you know, something tells you, well, you need to pull over and talk to this person. You can help them out. You know, you got your bait, got everything you need. You just, but you go, well, if I pull over and stop, it's going to take 30 minutes or an hour from my fishing. So you just continue to pass on by them, even though something in your heart told you to stop. You, you know, you, you didn't, you felt God's urge, but you didn't do anything with it. To me, that would be making no sense. You, you put, well, yeah, you put, you put the fishing ahead of God's priority. I mean, so it, it, for anybody, it can be anything. You know, we just, we label these things because you generally see the evils that come off of them. Um, Young children are more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. To me, young children, especially small children, are more in tune with God than than anybody. 
Because I, I think their lives and, you know, they're, they haven't had all these filters and experiences and they're quicker to, to, to react. You know, a kid tell you the truth on certain things really quick, you know. They'll tell you that they're fat, you know. <laughs> they don't have no, you know. They're, they don't have the uh, inhibitions that, that, that adults do. And I think without those inhibitions, you know, they're, they're quicker. Um, but even think about that, even most children and most people at a very young age understand that there's something bigger out there than, than they are. Um, well, we still got a few minutes, and I had some thoughts. Um, but yeah, we, like I said, we all have our bonds. And uh, you have to look for them to, to see them. Um, and uh, sometimes it takes a little time to, to come over. Yeah, you, you, have to, you have to remove yourself out of your comfort zone. Because um, at one time I was very comfortable with all the little chains and bonds and stuff. Because that's all I knew. Um, even though, you know, I was just walking a kind of like a dog on a stake, you know, I was just, I was very limited on to where I could go. Um, I had wrote me some notes somewhere. Well, it was, it was something on the side that I, 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 I had thoughts on. That's something we had talked about here a weekend or two ago. Um, you know, like I said, Satan, to understand Satan and, and to what he does, um, his, his, like I said, he wants to hinder the, the gospel. He doesn't want you to spread it. Um, he wants to take as many souls with him as he can. Um, and, he, and he hinders you. But he, ha he has little sneaky ways, and we talked about this here a little while back, about being desensitized. Um, that's another great, great thing that people don't realize. Um, is, is when he takes that, your, your, that shock away from you and those reactions, exposing you to something a little bit at a time. Um, if y'all been seeing on TV, uh, is ISIS, is that the terrorist group right now? Beheaded somebody. Um, we're starting to see this more every day. Um, especially ever since this, this last war got started. Um, <coughs> people, you, you see the world's not reacting to it that much. It, it, it's not, it's not upsetting them. Um, I made the mistake of watching one of those videos out of, out, of that, out of that curiosity. It is something that is never going to leave me. The, 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 one, seeing the execution of somebody. The, the gore, the sounds, the, just the whole imagery of it is burned in my mind. Um, that was a shock. Um, but this is a shock that most people aren't getting anymore. It's, 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 it, is, it is becoming accepted for that, to, that, this, that that is what's going to happen if you're over there. Why? Because you think about it. Do you want to go over there and have to, do, or to go through that? And being that way, what's the best way? <laughs> seeing that and doing that is the best way to keep Christians from going over there. Those that have the strength to go over there and to put their life at risk to do that, God bless them. They have some, they, they've got some faith and some strength that I can only hope to have one day to go over there and to do something like that. Um, and, and that's also showing, too, that there is a strong demonic force there. They are there in numbers.
kind of like Legion. Legion was there in a great multitude of numbers. And, and there's, there's strength in numbers in a lot of places. Um, and, and the problem is, again, is the two, when we, we dabbled in this a little bit, is um, Christians, and that's another thing to say, Christians in general let doctrines and stuff separate us. You know, and I've mentioned this before about uh, those that argue, well, you know, the Baptists don't worship right. And the seven-day Ad- Adventists, you, you know, you know, and again, Jehovah Witnesses don't think, but they're the only ones going to heaven, you know. I always, I like to tease the 144,000. Me and Richard likes to talk about this. <laughs> now there's 144,002, so they rewrit the, rewrit the thing so, you know, the two people wouldn't get left out. But the power that we would have if all the Christians in the world would come together and set things aside for just a little bit, the things that we can accomplish. Um, Yeah, uh, you you have to to blow yourself up. But um, here's the thing with Muslims. You don't have a choice in a Muslim community. I mean, you either you either going to be a Muslim or you're dead. I mean, so, you know, and you're taught that from an early age. What are you going to do? You know, and then, if, then where if somebody gets out of line, they'll beat you. And if you're lucky, they won't beat you to death. I, I mean, you know, where it was here in the news, this has been a, a, some years ago, um, where a uh, young girl had done something out of line and they were fixing to stone her to death. You, you see, you are made to conform to the world. See, that's kind of the opposite of Christianity. See, you're forced to conform, come to conform to their beliefs. You know, where we are not to conform, but to you know to transform into something else. And yeah, Richard. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's right. That's to, religion is a bond because religion wants you to conform to what the church wants. You know, we want your 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 behavior to conform to what we want. And I, and again, I, you know, because I I study a little bit on the Jehovah Witnesses and their ways, and the Mormons are this way a little bit too. Um, again, you know, Mormon Mormonism and the Jehovah Witness Church operates quite a bit the same way. They make you conform to what the church wants. You're held to the standard of the elders. The elders, if, if 
you come and report something to the elders that I seen that a member of the congregation was doing that I didn't, or that the church did not deem proper, then you are brought in front of the church or in front of the elders, and basically court is held. Evidence is given, um, testimonies is took. Then the elders, not God, the people of the church decide, okay, whether you did something wrong or you know or not. If they deem that you did something wrong, you're punished. Um, whether you're excommunicated, um, they will excommunicate you from the congregation, not the church. You're forced to sit somewhere off to the back. Nobody's allowed to talk to you until the elders, again, not God, until the elders deem that you're, you're repentant and that everything's good, and then they'll let you back into the graces of the church. See, they're forcing them to conform to what they want. Have no, it, it, there's no, there's, God's not involved in any of it. Um, you know, men cannot see what's in other men's heart. Um, some of us can lie very well and put on a very good show. And if I can do it good enough to convince the elder, see, there's no repentance. You know, I just told a big fat lie and convinced everybody and I'm good to go, see. Um, getting shy on time, ain't we? But yeah, like I said, you know, if you're being forced into something and, and or, you know, like going back to Satan and our enemy, um, you know, being politically correct is another way of being made to conform. Um, you know, we're not allowed to say certain things or do certain things. And if you are, the world will attack you. And this is all told to us in the Bible. You know, you want to upset some people, you know, just start speaking the truth. And you watch how quickly that those, and then they see this is what I was talking about with this fellow here that I'm seeing. Um, start speaking the truth, and, and let's see what happens. Um, you get corrected pretty quick, or what they think is going to be correction. But I think that's all I got for Sunday school this morning. Has anybody got anything they want to add to it or say? Love participation, y'all. It's good to get somebody else's point of view and, and, and to go with that, and it helps fill time, too. So, But uh, that's what we're here for is to help each other um, to grow and to become a little wiser. Okay. Um, well, I'll close this, and then we'll have a few minutes, and we'll get ready for morning services. Lord, I thank you again for this morning. I thank you for bringing us into your house. I thank you for your word, Lord. Um, I pray that you give us the strength, Lord, to uh, have clear vision on, on what Satan's doing, and that we see him coming before he even gets here, Lord, and that you give us the abilities to, to, to defend ourselves and, and the power to, and the strength to spread your word, Lord, that we might fight Satan on, on here on his ground and uh, give us the ability to, to do what's needed to be done, Lord. And um, we love you. And we praise your name. And just give you all the glory. These things in our Lord Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.